Photographers are like panda bears. They're clumsier than you would think. They put on a lot of weight for the winter. They eat bamboo, a lot of them. It doesn't mean if five of them came to me for help, I'd refuse. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So today we have an interesting episode. This is going to be a TT Artisan review. 10 mil Tony 2 for the Nicky Boy. APS-C lens. That's a fast wide prime for vlogging. We'll head out to the street soon. I'm going to answer five loser photographers and we'll switch to this. Right now we're on the kit lens. Zoomed all the way into 70 just because we could. Oh boy. Wow. What a transition. So, first thing, and then we'll switch, build quality. For some reason, they went with the much-hated screw-on hood. I don't know why anybody does that anymore, but whatever. It feels nice. All metal build. It's heavy. It's a little heavy. That many grams. Well, I did my research ahead of time. Pretty stiff feeling smooth ring not bad and it has an aperture control which is the tiniest little ring ever and that's kind of hurts if i'm being honest with you it's really stiff it's okay like it's high quality feel of a lens decent nikon aps-c the one thing that's kind of annoying if nikon would do it they might it doesn't have the filter thread anywhere on there you think i remember what it is it's not on the hood like tell me at least so i can know oh yeah 72 mil i think it's 72 so it can take filters even though it's a bulbous element but it has this thing another screw in thing that ruins my audio like otherwise you would be dealing with this bulbous lens come on like nicky boy so whatever they made a solution and it's not like a hard one it's lightweight let's switch to it now and then we go out vlogging with it is that possible with no stave only digital wow that just got so dramatic and messy oh i had all these things hidden out of the shot i got receipts over here and notes and lids for stuff not bad for ultra wide from what i've seen it's pretty sharp are you having 3d pop that's doubted Highly doubted, but it's a Tony 2, so you get a slight amount of blur. It could be the ultimate vlogging lens. I thought, on paper, if you have Nikon Digital Stabe and just this, you might have something, so we'll try that. But that was not your question, was it? I will make the next only videos in the forest. Not too often animals appear, but I don't have time to bring them. Which lens? What the hell was that? Your first three attempts at a sentence. What, I don't understand. You don't bring raccoons for wildlife and then set them free. I do it, but which lens should I have to switch between when I stand and talk at close range and then move to focus on the animals a bit further away? You're in a conundrum, aren't you? There's really three options for you. Either you go with a super zoom bridge cam or point and shoot. So you have a tiny little Sony HX99 or the Canon SX40, 740. And so like you have a 24 mil and then you can zoom to like 720 all in a tiny thing. Quality will be, eh, you're not going to impress anybody, but it's pretty amazing that they can do that. Or you move up to the bridge cam, which is like a Canon SX70 type of thing. And it's a 20 mil to 1350 or something. So it's like, wow, but I don't know. That's just, it, you could get by. But like those are your options or you're going mirrorless with like olympus om1 with the 12 to 200 you can vlog and get a 400 mil equiv reach it's not much but it's okay with some crops in the slow-mo you might live it's not good or you go with the mirrorless with two lenses a wide and a telephoto so like a panasonic g92 with the leica 9 mil 1.7 and then also you're bringing the 100 to 400 or a sony a6700 11 mil tony 1.8 plus the 70 to 350 so like that type of setup or what might be the better choice and we'll get into why you just bring a little dji pocket 3 
you're done for the wide end. Or Action 4, GoPro 12, Ace Pro if you're vlogging people like 20 feet behind you and you want them to be in focus. That and your wildlife setup of preference. Nikon Z8 with the 800mm prime, super budget setup. And so like switching, here's the deal. The super zoom would be the easiest because you're vlogging, but a lot of them don't have mic jacks that I mentioned. The SX70 might, does it? It could. And then it's an all-in-one encompassing solution. Otherwise you have to do external audio. That's not fun to do multiple clips syncing. So it's like, you could do that. It's not great. If you want higher quality, the super zoom lenses are stupid. And really what you're debating is, do I use my mirrorless with a wide lens and then switch in the field? It's just dumb. Go out for a long walk and you're filming stuff with your cam and you have your other vlogging cam. What if you want to talk in the middle of that? You're going to switch your lens out in the field dust. There's dust on the rear element. The reality is the DJI Pocket 3 probably destroys whatever you're thinking of getting for a wide angle option anyway. So you're done, man. We moved on from your life. DJI Pocket 3 plus a Fuj. Huh? I moved you closer. Huh? You're right there now. Come on now. Wide angle distorting for your face, for your dating profile pic. That's a good pic. You'll get a lot of clicks. What do you recommend for 3D pop on a budget? The irony of what you just said is the most 3D pop lenses are the budget ones. People are saying, oh, not everyone can afford the 3D pop lenses. They're the budget ones that are cheapest. Yeah, look at that. Great deals for the price. I'm using a Canon 5D Mark II. You're the only one on earth doing that still, but okay. The first camera that did like full frame video, I think. All right, if you want to stick with the first one, the Pioneer, they're usually not rewarded. And the Fuji X-H1. Hmm. Phase detect points right in here. Only this little box. Fuji Color Science, you could get by. In a couple of years, I'd like to go back to full frame. You already have one. So what do you mean? Considering Panasonic for video. Okay, you're lost. You're really lost. If you want 3D pop right now, you probably already have the lenses, but Canon EF L lenses, the Mark 1s, 24 mil, 21.4, Mark 1, 35 mil, 1.4, anything else, I don't know, the 85, 1.2, that's the king of pop. So you get stuff like that, okay, you're living. If you want Fuji lenses, they have a bunch, the 35 mil, 1.4, cult classic. They have, a, I made a list already, there's a whole list I didn't make the list. Angry Photographer made the list. I just showed it to you against his approval, most likely. I'm so sorry, my friend. But like, he made the list. He's tested them all. Some of them have the nice micro contrast that we need in our lives and others don't. If you were going Panasonic for video, then you have all the Leica glass. That can be nice. Little G92 with your Leica anything. They have a bunch of nice Leica they're not real Leicas, but they have the Leica name on it, and that makes you think there's 3D pop in it. But the lenses I noticed the most, micro contrast, 3D pop abilities are Zeiss, Leica anything, Voigtlander, some of the Nikon Z, like that 4022, that's a surprising Leica pop factor. Get some of that in your life. And then the old Canon EF lenses and the Nikon F lenses, but some of the new Z ones, dare we dream a Plana 135? They literally are the only ones marketing 3D pop in their whole thing, so they could have it. They're saying it's there. It's pricey though, that you, that's not on a budget. But just look for vintage primes on eBay or something, the Helios. Freaking 44 2 slash whatever the hell that thing is. And just old stuff. Old Zeiss planar manual focus things. Old AIS Nikkor lenses. It's like magic can be had. Minolta, maybe. Wow. 
Our last question before we go outside and answer two more losers as we test the vlogging capabilities and potential squirrel action of a 10 mil Tony 2. There will be no squirrels, most likely. I have a G9, 15 mil, 1.7 Leica, 12 to 35, 45 1.8. Would an R8 or a 6700 be an upgrade on image quality for video on day and low light pair with prime lens? Kind of barely. I don't know, man. The G9 has some magic. If you can get by the pig skin skin tones, you'll be all right. When I made that G9 versus Canon EOS R video, nobody preferred the EOS R. Could have been my settings, but like the G9 was the superior camera. It had better colors, better freaking stabilization for sure, and it just had a more detailed image. It was just better. So like, think of this, it killed my EOS R. The EOS R killed my R8 in a lot of ways. It's good, it's amazing, I like the image, but not many people did. And it's not a highly rated camera. I love it for its tininess and the color science. And digital stave is good and you put a Voigtlander lens on there, you're good. It's like for you, you already have all this stuff and Leica, if I'm you, the 12 to 35, I guarantee you don't have the Leica version of it. Work towards getting that. And then maybe one day you're upgrading to the G9 II, or maybe they will release like a G96 that's tiny, but fact, fact filled. It could happen. So, so far, what are you thinking of the TT Artisan 10 mil Tony II as a studio lens? Super close. You could have a shotgun mic right on there. You're that close. It'd be not completely terrible audio. Let's see if Nikon Digital Stabe can handle this thing. It has no electronic contacts, so we never know anything. I hate when companies do that. They're not allowed to participate in the protocols. You know what I mean? Let's go. Lie to us because it's subtle They want us walking through so many puddles They set the world up for you to struggle Most of us could use a body double, body double. You can't catch somebody else's troubles Even if you bundle through the rubble In life we tumble through the puzzle Cause we're gullible First lie discovered. Putting filter threads on this thing is a no-go for me. I just, it kept screwing. There was no end game to it. I don't trust my filters on this thing, so I don't know. There's just like not enough space to make the filter thread complete. So like you could, in theory, on a tripod, put a little glimmer glass on there, but come on now. We have digital stabe on now. Is it good enough? I have a feeling it's not. Let's walk normally. This is just digital stabe. Nikon. You're probably no Canon. And then if we were to be slow and careful, is it good enough? I feel like it's not going to be, and I'm just going to switch to DaVinci. So I want to take Nikon stabe off, and then we do DaVinci stabe, and then answer the list. Okay, here's with no stabe whatsoever, and then boom. Da Vinci. Stabilized. Good enough? Just be careful. Okay. This guy rudely messaged me on Instagram. I never check my Instagram. Actually, I always check it, but I never answer people there. Come on. I was wondering if you could recommend a camera for a noob who wants a camera that's more or less grab and go. DJI Pocket 3, you're done. Boom. Grab it and go. I will almost exclusively be filming MMA grappling. That sounds dangerous. It's like, you're gonna be in the action, are you moving around and 
get sweat everywhere. Staff, camera, announcements, podcasting, two people on a couch. What the hell? I want to film people fighting, but also then do the podcast after and interview the fighter that lost. He has brain damage. Come on. What's he going to say? How come I'm dark? See, that's the thing. When you get a third-party lens, Nikon no longer does the happy exposure dance. Unless that box is what's doing it. No? Oh, man. So he wants to know if he should just go with a Pocket 3 or a GoPro on a gimbal. Come on, man. Get some dignity. So I think you could probably get by with the Pocket 3, depending on your gym, how low light is it. It's not great in low light, but it's okay. But you just want to grab and go. It's hard to beat that thing. Because if you go like all pro with a gimbal, you're not grabbing and going anywhere. There's balancing. Oh, it's unbalanced. What happened? Gimbals suck. I hate them so much. That's what most people are doing. You get these people walking down the streets and the guy's filming on like an A6100 with his gimbal. It's out of focus somehow on a Sony camera. They suck. So just go Pocket 3. Speaking of the Pocket 3, can you guess which one is which? Is it the one drifting away from me at this moment? Yeah, it was that one. It looked good enough. It, like, it probably looks better than this. Probably less shaky. Probably. There's no probabilities about it. Come on, man. Just get a Pocket 3 and move on already. Watch this transition, by the way. Are you ready for it? Wow. Oh my goodness. So that's what you're looking at. You're looking right at it. So I would totally just start with this thing. It's probably going to be good enough and you don't know if you're even going to like doing this. You might make a couple videos and then you're like, ah, I hate this shit. So like then at least you haven't spent too much money. Pocket 3 wins. Always. Alright, last loser. Hi, are there some 14 to 16 mil DX fast lenses for Nikon, native or third party? Thank you. Your question is so relevant to my show, it's ridiculous. The answer is basically no. There are some, but it's stuff like this that you're going to get. A TT Artisan, Seven Artisan, are they the same company? Is it the same guy? Who knows? You have like a couple. They don't have electronic contacts. Is digital stay good enough? What are you using it for? Vlogging, obviously. There's, if it was me and I wanted wide angle for Nikon APS-C, it's 100% the 12 to 28. It's not a fast prime, and I don't care about your thoughts. That's the lens to get. And then there's stuff like, I think Lawa and Nisi both have a 9mm 2.8. Wasn't at all your request, but just go to B&H, go click on lenses, and then Nikon Z mount, and then you'll see all the list of what's available. For the most part, it's like every lens there. There's the Voigtlander, 14 mil Tony, 4.5. It's not fast or long. It's your focal length, and it's Voigtlander. Manual focus only. What are you using it for? Nobody knows. Is the landscape? You're a loser. So, what do you think of this lens? I'm thinking it's very cheap decent. You get some Tonys back there. You get even more Tonys if you bring it in a notch. I don't know. I'll probably sell it immediately, but it's not light, but it is cheap. It is a fast prime 15 mil. You could do worse with 150. I would probably just buy a cage for my pocket three with that money, but whatever. Get a microphone or something. Take your family out for an all-you-can-eat sushi buffet. Still, affiliate links will be available to you. How are you doing? Subscribing for more videos. See you next time.